NASA says Artemis and SLS will fail. Is it too late to fix things? NASA is planning to take mankind back to the moon. Artemis 1 is the first mission to the moon of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return astronauts to the lunar surface by 2025 or so. The mission will use NASA's first space launch system rocket to launch an uncrewed Orion spacecraft around the moon and return it to Earth. In April, NASA set out to make history. The SLS was rolled out to a launch pad at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Orion spacecraft that would carry crew members is in its place atop the rocket. A 45-hour test known as a wet dress rehearsal was slated for April 1st through April 3rd. The test started as planned, but then something shocking happened that has set back the entire program indefinitely. Today we're going to talk about NASA's plans for Artemis and SLS. Has the program failed? Is it too late to now fix things? Where does NASA go from here? Well, stick around until the end as we answer these questions and more. So let's dive right in. NASA called off a critical fueling test of its Artemis 1 moon rocket on Sunday due to safety concerns with ground equipment on the booster's mobile launcher platform. Technicians plan to fuel the Artemis 1 mega rocket, called the Space Launch System, or short for SLS, with 2.6 million liters of super cold propellant on Sunday at Pad 39B of NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The fueling test was the first stage of a three day wet dress rehearsal designed to test the launch countdown process for NASA's Artemis 1 mission to the moon later this year. But a problem on the Artemis 1 rocket's mobile launcher, a platform that includes its gantry tower and other vital equipment, foiled the test, NASA officials said. A system that uses fans to pressurize the mobile launcher and keep out harmful gases failed. Initially, NASA attempted to finish the wet dress rehearsal on Monday, April 4th, with the loading of fuel expected to begin around 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Agency officials confirmed during a news conference held Sunday evening. This timeline, however, saw yet another setback. NASA has pushed back the resumption of the Artemis 1 moon mission's critical wet dress rehearsal by two days to Tuesday, April 12th. The agency had planned to restart the wet dress, a practice run of rocket fueling and other important Artemis 1 pre-launch activities on April 9th at Pad 39B of Kennedy Space Center in Florida. But the mission team decided to modify the test procedure after noticing a problem with a helium check valve, which prevents the gas from escaping out of Artemis 1's huge space launch system rocket. Helium is used to clear engine lines before loading and draining propellant, NASA officials explained in an Artemis 1 update. The Artemis 1 rocket has had a busy few days during the wet dress rehearsal, which began Friday evening on April 1st. The last 48 hours have been one of the more interesting 48 hours that I've had in the context of working missions leading up to a launch, Mike Serafin, Artemis mission manager for NASA, said during the news conference. Saturday was a particularly stormy day in Cape Canaveral, where KSC is located. Weather officials for the procedure predicted a 90% chance of precipitation and an 80% chance of lightning, both of which materialized. NASA knew that weather was going to be probably one of their bigger challenges. And indeed, by early afternoon on Saturday, four lightning strikes were detected at Pad 39B, one of them particularly strong, but none of them struck the SLS rocket, NASA reported. They were diverted by the pad's lightning protection system, which is made up of three tall towers and a network of catenary lines that redirect electrical current to the ground away from the rocket. Responding to the lightning strike set the team back about four hours, Charlie Blackwell Thompson, the Artemis 1 launch director, said during the news conference. Overnight, the teams made up most of that time, and officials decided to proceed with the wet dress rehearsal on Sunday. But shortly after 7 a.m. Eastern Time, Blackwell Thompson said, the team was alerted to an issue with a fan that pressurized the mobile launcher. That issue turned out to be a breaker trip, and personnel switched to the fan's redundant backup, only to have that fan also stop working. As of 5.30 p.m. local time, teams were expecting the fan system, Blackwell Thompson said, and she expected to have the results in hand within an hour or two. The fans are needed to provide positive pressure to the enclosed areas within the mobile launcher and keep out hazardous gases, NASA wrote in an update on Sunday. Technicians are unable to safely proceed with loading the propellants into the rocket's core stage and interim chirogenic propulsion stage without this capability. Currently, personnel at NASA do not believe that the fan issue is related to the lightning strikes since the fan continued to operate on Sunday morning before the failure. Besides the fan systems, all seems well, Blackwell Thompson said. The team will attempt to begin fueling the rocket on Monday at about 7 a.m., she said, 
which would put the launch time of the rehearsal at about 2.40 p.m. Stakes were very high for the Monday retest. If Monday's attempt also encountered an issue, NASA would have to weigh range schedules and the availability of fuel before setting a new date. The SLS is so large that NASA can't store extra tanks worth of liquid hydrogen, one of its two fuels on site. Unfortunately for them, Monday's attempt could also not go ahead, putting the space agency in a downward spiral of failures. So are you guys having a good time learning more about NASA's current predicaments? Tell us something, where does NASA go from here? Do these delays mean the mission will not go ahead as planned? Think about it for a while, but while you think, do subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to receive instant notification about all our future videos. Ground teams at Kennedy Space Center are competing diagnostic testing and hardware closeouts on the Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft ahead of liftoff on the Artemis 1 mission, an unpiloted demonstration flight around the moon. The Artemis 1 mission, set to last at least three weeks, will place the Orion capsule in orbit around the moon for a shakedown cruise before four astronauts fly to the moon on the Artemis 2 mission in 2024. The Orion spacecraft will return to Earth for a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California. Other work ongoing inside the Vehicle Assembly Building includes testing of the flight termination system, which will be used to destroy the rocket if it veers off its pre-approved flight corridor. Technicians are also installing instrumentation on the Space Launch's system's two solid rocket boosters. The two side-mounted boosters and four RS-25 core stage engines, all used recycled hardware from the Space Shuttle program, will generate 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, more than the Saturn V moon rocket from the Apollo program. The 322-foot-tall rocket will roll out of High Bay 3 and emerge from the Vehicle Assembly Building next month on a journey to Launch Pad 39B for a wet dress rehearsal. The practice countdown will culminate in the loading of chirogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid hydrogen into the space launch system before concluding at T-minus 10 seconds, just before engine ignition. The rocket will return to the VAB for further inspections and closeouts, then it'll roll back to pad 39B about a week before the target launch date. Officials gave up on launch periods recently after the engine controller problem and to allow additional time for testing and closeouts ahead of the wet dress rehearsal. Once NASA gets over the hump of the wet dress rehearsal, things are expected to go much more smoothly from there. The SLS test flight is a milestone in a decade-long development that started in 2011. The Artemis 1 wet dress rehearsal is a critical step in verifying that the SLS rocket is ready for launch. The booster is NASA's most powerful rocket ever, and the agency's first moon rocket since its Saturn V rocket launched Apollo astronauts in the 1960s and 70s. Despite the setbacks, NASA plans to go full steam ahead with its plans, refusing to let them hold its mission back. So, do you think NASA can turn things around and put the Artemis program back on track? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to watch more of our amazing videos, then stay tuned.